So before we jump into making the tape, I'm going to start by modeling a simple pipe, like this bended uh, pipe. So I'm going to set a radius scale of 0 0.5 and 10 rows. And I'm also going to pick and cut. Then I want to target this primitive, so I'm going to sort the primitives by Y. And we get zero at the bottom. That way I can do a poly inch. And I'm going to target the primitive zero. I just want to move the primitive zero. And I'm going to change this to position and direction to be procedural. And I'm going to use on the Y the bounding box. Uh, the Y min. So I want to move from that position. And now I can just offset in here. So let me just set this to zero and I want to set this to 90 of course and this value can be something like 0.6. So we get something like this. Then we can mirror this and let me see how I did this. So on the X that's fine but I want to use the bounding box 0 DF max. Yeah. Then I want to match size this. I'm just jumping through this quickly and then we can just create a node. So this is our initial shape. Now let's place the tape in here. So let me organize this. And for the tape I'm gonna use, first of all I'm gonna target this side, so for that I'm gonna use a group expression and I'm gonna name this left left and one and i'm gonna choose in here preset five sided so it's picking both so i'm gonna do and v at p dot x is less than zero so we get this one now we can get the spiral and you will see how we did that why we did this group in a bit so i'm gonna do a spiral gonna change the height to 0 0.475 is a value I found worked well 4.5 turns um, I'm also gonna change this to explicit and gonna pick the radius of the tube so radius scale let's actually see that and paste and copy this and paste in here and now we need to divide this by 2 oops what have I done? So divide this by two, so we get the same radius, but I'm gonna increase just a bit. And I'm also going to open this slightly. So multiplied by 0 0.975. So we get no overlaps when we wrap it around. And then I'm just gonna do a match size and match this to here and make sure I do use groups and in in the target group I choose left and gone and then I can just move it down let's say by negative 0.5 so we get something like this and this is our uh, spiral that we're going to mesh so for that um, I'm gonna do a sweep set this to ribbon and I fight a bit with this, but basically we need to use the same end up vector. And I also want to compute UVs and normalize UV. No, that's fine. Compute UVs because we want this full strip. And then in the surface, we just gonna roll it. So in here, we're gonna roll it by minus 90. Let's see. Yeah. And then we want to change the width columns to 4 that's fine and the width to 0 0.115 so we get something like this so we have the UVs now I don't like these huge UVs but our other option is to have them compressed like this which I don't want because I want to use those UVs for something so I'm just gonna do a UV flatten let's look at the UVs and we want to preserve seams and island boundaries and we get this result so that's fine now we will move this to uv space so vertex split um uv split 
pretty disinterested stuff in. I just want to promote it. We don't need this, we could just have promoted because we only have one island, but either way, it's a good practice. And I'm gonna subdivide this. And I'm gonna subdivide this by three for now. So quite a bit, but still we only got 60k premiums, so that's fine. Then we're gonna create in here and all because this is our original position that we will later deform. Then we want to move these UVs to the position. So let's do that and we will see an issue. So UV to B. And let me just resize this. And we can do the following. We can do vector UV. It will be equal to V at UV. And vector pause. We can manipulate in here swizzle the position. So let's do V at UV dot X. Along the Y we can set it to zero. Yes, and along the Z we can set it to Y. Not V at UV, sorry, UV. We don't need to. We have that variable. And if we do V at V equals pause, we move this to UV space. Uh, but we might want to reverse this in here. So the problem with this is, you can see we have a huge size difference. And this will hurt us when we try to displace the final mesh. So, in order to have the same ratio, the same size, we need to measure the... I didn't found another way, so what we will do is to measure the area throughout. We want the full area, not by primitive, that's costly, and we don't need that. And then we, we will name this area target, then we will measure again the area after we move it to this, let's name it UV position, and let's... Uh, name the area, area source. Then we're gonna scale this, so... Scale... Um, ratio. Scale factor. And let me see, we just need to divide one area by the other. So let's do float source area source to be equal to cream. And we get the area source and we can pick any primitive so just zero then we can do area target and name the same in here and then we can do float vector and since we are dealing with areas we need to do a square root so we divide the target area area target by the area source so we have a scale factor and then we can just do v at p times equal factor and we get if we look now so before we moved it it's a bit hard to see but as you can see we should have about the same thickness and length so now this will help us to have the correct displacement at the end so we still have uvs which is important and after this we will do the deformation and we won't use any uh, solver we will just use um, an alternative which is the wrinkle deformer and then we want to create a null in here and let's name this rest and now i want to create in here another null let's just create two nulls in here one for the geometry to deform and another for the rest. We don't want to do anything to the rest, we just want to affect the, the geometry to deform. So let's do an attribute noise vector and we will change the position. So this will be a bit too much. So I'm gonna play with this. So zero centered, so we get both positive and negative values. An amplitude of 0, 0.5, so just a little bit, then we can reduce the element size to something like this. And I also played with an offset that worked well for me. So something like this. Then we can do hybrid terrain. Default settings will be fine. And I also want to scale along the Y. So first of all, I don't want to move along the Z, probably. Probably. Maybe we can change that later. But I want to change the amplitude to 0 0.3. Uh, is 
is this what I'm going for? So if I do the wrinkle deformer, we start to see the duct tape emerging, those wrinkles. But I want to play in here with this, so I'm gonna first of all increase the constraint iteration, change this to clot, and I'm gonna play with the rest length scale, so increase a bit the clot so it deforms a bit more. Then I'm gonna increase the smooth iterations so we get something like this. I hope you can see through the recording, as you can see we have these fake wrinkles. Well, they are pretty real in this case, They're not so fake. So, uh, I think that's all for now. What we can do, that's all for the wrinkle deformer, I mean. You could try to play with the noise. As you can see, we get a different pattern. You can you can try to play with the amount of, sub of subdivisions. So, as you can see, in this case, three will be more than enough. You can play also with the algorithm in here, the topology. You can play with surface struts. Mm, it's not bad, right? Maybe we can increase the folds or we can decrease them, the size of the folds. But I prefer the cloud preset. So, yeah, I think I'm gonna stick with it. You can also increase these to have more, um, more cloud to play with. It's just like Vellum, wrestling scale. And yeah, I'm talking too much, so I'm just gonna do in here the deformation. So I'm gonna take the original position and take the rest with two object merge. We have done this object merge quick, quick. Uh, I mean, I did a video on this where you can use a simple Python script to create this quick object merge on command. So that's it if you're curious about. And let's do the deformation. So let's make this deform. We want to move this back to the original position, which is this one, but with the deformation. So maybe there are easier ways, but I'm going to connect the rest, which is this before the deformation. And I'm going to connect in here the original position on the third input. And then I can just do an XYZ disk. So for the XYZ disk, we will need premium, we will need uh, an XPrim, so int XPrim, which is the target prim. And we also need a vector, and I'm gonna name it XUVW. You can name it whatever you want, like it prim and it UVW, that's more common, or source prim, source UVW, anyways. Then I'm gonna do a next YZ this and go to the input one from the current position and save the X prim and the XUVW or write to them. Here we're just initializing and here we are writing to them. And then we can do VFP easy or let's do vector plus is equal to prim uv uh, now we want to read from the third input so two and we want to read the position and using the this x prim and the x uvw coordinates and if we do v at p equals pause we should have this but as you can see even if we had the normal we have a flat geometry. So we need somehow to save this Y deformation that we have in here. So for that, I'm just gonna do something really quick in here. So before we deform, we can create a wrangle. Now let's, uh, let's create a wrangle in here and target the flat plane and we want to save the vector displacement in here so basically we will do v at this it will be equal to v at p minus v at of input 1p so the position from the second input since we have the same amount of geometry we can do this and if we have a look we should have a displacement it's not very noticeable but it's there because it's too small so the values are really small so we have the displacement. Now we need to displace this along the normal using the, in this case, the displacement dot Y, since we are just interested in the Y component. So, uh, F. So if we do now, if we read in first the normal, so vector N, 
and we want the n from the second input and now we do pause plus n multiplied by b at this dot y and we get our geometry so uh, as you can see we have our deformation there we have a look in here not here sorry here and what else can we do did i did something in here let me see i want to start angle of minus 45 so i have some tape in here now we can do something really quick which is change this to three point lighting and create a cop material preview and let's do a metal of one and if you want you can in my final scene i introduced some some ramps in here to create the texture but i'm not gonna even do that because this is dragging to a long lesson and we can also i guess we can also subdivide this and yeah guys that's basically it so this is probably the last tutorial of the year i hope you really enjoyed please let me know your feedback below it's always important I just want to take the chance to thank you all for your continuous support, especially my patrons. And yeah, I hope we can accomplish some, some cool projects in the next year. See you. Thank you.